We cannot thank him enough for our choir. Thank you, Lord. Who are singing songs of adoration to God, to praise him and to worship him. May God continue to anoint them and strengthen them that they will to fulfill their calling and bring many souls to the same knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so today we are reading from the book of Exodus. This is the book that tells us about the exit. That's why it's called Exodus. The exit of the children of Israel from captivity for over 400 years into the promised land. It's a very important book to read. And it is that book that God gave them the law, gave them all the feasts of the instructions. So it's very important that we know what this book is about. Now the passage we are reading today comes from chapter 23. And God is speaking to his people, he said three times in a year, shall keep a feast unto me, unto me in that year. Three times. Every year, they have to keep a minimum. Actually, there were seven feasts in all. But God emphasized these three as very important. All of them were important, but in particular, these three. And he says, shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. So all the feasts were the feast of the Lord, and those feasts were supposed to remind them of their journey from slavery into the promised land and how God helped them to get to where they were going. In other words, they were supposed to remind them of God's goodness to them. And so they celebrated this feast remembering their journey from Egyptian captivity to the promised land. And God did that for a purpose because we human beings have a tendency to forget very quickly what God has done for us. As soon as we are comfortable, we quickly forget. So God set this face to remind them and to remind us too of how we were in slavery to sin and how God delivered us and led us through a terrible wilderness into the promised land. And says the first, they shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, what does that mean? It means bread without yeast. And that was the first feast God inaugurated. And why was that feast? That feast represented the feast that they did when they left Egyptian captivity. That night they left. Because God told them you must not eat any leaven, any yeast. Now why did he say yeast in particular? Yeast is symbolic of sin. So when God told them you must not eat. Yeast must not be found in anywhere you live for seven days. He was talking of the coming Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. See, everything that happened in the New Testament spoke to what Jesus came to do. Even Jesus Christ never said it. He said, all the law and the prophets speak about me. That's what Jesus said. And it's true. All the feasts, everything we read in the New Testament, Exodus, Genesis, all the prophets, they all spoke to Jesus about Jesus. So this feast represented how the children of Israel were saved from captivity through the shed blood of the Lamb. And God told them, you must not eat, eat any yeast. Then I shall eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded you in the time of the Amon Abib, that's the first month. For in it, you came out from Egypt. And none should appear before me empty. So God wanted to remind them of how they were in captivity. Just like most of us, before we came to know Jesus, we were in slavery to sin. We were slaves to Satan. He did what he wanted with us. We had no choice. But the day you were released through the shed blood of the Lamb, that day you should always write it down because the most important day of your life, not even your birthday, that day that you came to know Jesus and received him as your Lord and Savior is the month you celebrate every day because it represents the day of your freedom from the captivity of sin. One day you are going straight to hell, the next day you took a U-turn and began to head to hell. 
very important day. And this is the feast that's supposed to celebrate, the feast of unleavened bread. So we remind them of how they were saved from captivity. And he says that none shall appear before me empty. Why? Because he was saying that to show your gratitude to me, you cannot come to me celebrating this feast with empty hands. That means you don't, really, you don't appreciate how my son shed his blood to save you. You see, that lamb that was slain in Egypt symbolized the, the blood of the lamb. Because the blood, the, the lamb had to be spotless. There was a single spot in it, they couldn't use it. Completely spotless, representing the sinless life of our Savior Jesus Christ. And that, that, that lamb was slain, and the blood was applied over the doorposts. And when the angel of death came in the night, every house that did not have the blood, the angel went in and killed the firstborn of the family and also the firstborn of the animal of the house. See? So it was the blood that saved them. And it was after that that Pharaoh said, okay, you can leave. Before then, it was, he said no. He refused. Even after all the ten plagues, plagues of frogs, plagues of hail, plagues of ants, all these things. He said, but when he lost his firstborn, that broke his back and said, okay, you can go. So very important feast to celebrate. We too should remember that day, the day you came to know Jesus, you should remember it. You should always celebrate every year. Just like celebrate your birthday. Say, you, I want you to come and rejoice with me. Why? This is the day that the Lord saved me from sin. The day I came to know Jesus. That is your feast of unleavened bread. And the second feast, the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field. In other words, that first harvest, that was that, what that feast represented. And that happened 50 days after they left Egypt. And God made them on Mount Sinai. It was the same 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. And the Holy Spirit came. That was that feast of harvest. And the feast, and the last was the feast of ingathering. So the beginning feast was the beginning of harvest. The feast of Ingar and the feast of tabernacles was the last feast at the end of the harvest, which is in this October that we're celebrating right now. The end of the year, where you are gathering your labors. No, so they're not preparing for the planting season. The harvest season is over. So in reality, in the spirit realm, we have not celebrated that feast yet because all the seeds have not been gathered in yet. They're still coming in. But we have celebrated the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We have done the Feast of Harvest. That happened on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. That was the Feast of Harvest. So I want us to go to um, Leviticus 23, verse 10. Leviticus 23, verse 10. This is a very important feast. And as I said, the Feast of the Lord, not man made feast. God Himself requested. That they should celebrate this feast to remind them of their journey in life and how we led them to the promised land. Go on. Speak to the children of Israel. Yes. And say to them, Yes. When you come into the land which I give to you mm -hmm. and reap its harvest, mm -hmm. then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest mm -hmm. to the priest. That's it. You shall wave the sheaf before the Lord mm -hmm. to be accepted on your behalf. That's it. And the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the first fruits. That is the feast of harvest. Your, your first collection of your harvest. Really, it's symbolizing the first fruits of souls to the kingdom of God. And that happened on the day of Pentecost. Remember, the day of Pentecost, 8,000 souls were saved when Peter preached. It's the beginning of the harvest. They just started the harvest. Then the last feast of tabernacles was the end of the harvest when they were gathering all their crops. So we are still in the process. The saints are still coming in. There will come a time when there will be it. All the seeds have come in, and now the harvest is ended. So that is what is going to happen. So three times in the year, all the males will appear before the Lord God. So the, the females will take care of the children at home, but the males would come and worship God. So you shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with living bread. In other words, that blood was sinless, heartless. We must not offer any yeast without blood. With living bread means the bread we eat normally now is leaven. It has yeast in it. That's why it's soft, and you can take it, and it's succulent, and you know, bread without yeast is like 